Until now, you only saw examples of combining two tables. But what if you need to combine data from three different tables or even more? You simply need to add new joins to the SQL statement you're writing. In fact, you can also use different types of joins to combine those tables. Let's go for an example. Take a look at this simple diagram. We have here three tables, borrower, loan, and copy. And this is the way they relate to each other. If I need to write a SQL statement to get information from all of them, I need to do simple joins, combining them two by two. First, I will join information from borrower and loan. Then I will join information from loan and copy. It's quite simple. Let's take a look at how this works. And here we go. I pick the column last name from the table borrower, the column copy ID from table loan, and the column status from table copy. This will allow me to know what is the status of a specific book loan for a given user. To do so, as I said, I first combine information from borrower and loan, and then I join from the data from loan and copy. In this result set, we see the name of the users, the ID of each book, and the status they have. So by now, we still have five books loaned and those are the users and the book names we should take a look. In case you had more tables, you simply should add new joins to the SQL script. SQL also allows you to create joins using other logical operators than the usual equal sign. They are called non-equal joins. You can use other logical operators such as greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, different than, and so on. Syntax is exactly the same we have before, but beware the resulting data set from non-equal joins are very weird. For instance, pick a record from one table and compare a given key using less than operator. Then you might possibly find several records in the other table which satisfy this criteria for only one single key value. Let's take a look at this. Here is our SQL statement. I'm using on purpose the inner join operator, but let's do a small change here. Instead of equal join, let's make it a non-equal join. Seems quite simple, right? Now take a look at the result. Remember when we ran first time, we had five records for the inner join, but now we have 10. Why? Because when you compare a key value, D1, from one table, and defines that it should combine for with each record from the second table, which have values less than this one, you will find several records that might accept this correspondence like this. 
to borrow ID D1, combine with D2, D3, D4, and D5. When I change for D2, it combined with D3, D4, and D5. And so on. D3, we have D4 and D5. And finally, D4, the only example when we have only one record corresponding to the first one. So, this is how the null equal operator works. If you choose another one, instead of less than, let's make it more than or equal to. Probably we will have m a result set that is even bigger than this one we just saw. Take a look. Instead of 10 records, this one grew to 30 records. It's sometimes it's very uh, confusing to foresee what we're going to get with a non equal operator. So be careful when you try to use this. Make sure this is exactly what you need to do. Okay, that's all. Thank you for watching these videos. <music>